You've probably heard the term artificial intelligence, and it does sound high, sci-fi, exciting, interesting, but artificial intelligence is playing a big role in medicine and a role that's only growing. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian McDonough. Welcome to Primary Care Today on ReachMD. My special guest today is Dr. Cecilia Van Cowenbergen. And Dr. Van Cowenbergen is an expert in artificial intelligence, studies it, understands it. And first of all, Dr. Um, Van Cowenbergen, welcome to the program. And explain to us what artificial intelligence really means, a little bit about the evolution. I think it would be interesting for everyone. Thank you very much, Brian. And yes, actually in pharma, artificial intelligence is uh, considered perhaps the optimal synergy between leading edge computational science and therapeutic development. So to, to understand the overall approach to address drug discovery and developments and other medical indications in that true artificial intelligence impact, probably impact in, in the pharmaceutical industry, we need to pay attention to some adjacent factors on one hand. One is technology synergy, so that is the impressive advances in, in life science research and development in the past two, three years, and how they are playing a leading role in transformation of the healthcare industry. So this myriad of new developments in the fields of gene and cell therapies empowered with nanotechnologies, omics technologies, or novel smart molecules approaches are extensively transforming the drug discovery and development landscape for the effective treatment of disease. On that note, artificial intelligence is forced to provide the best switch approach to leverage scientific literature, patients, omics data, and overall clinical data to drive smart decisions. Regarding your specific questions, one of the most important things to understand here is the evolution of artificial intelligence, that is, how artificial intelligence meets pharmaceutical applications and development. Progress in AI first came from the cybernetics and symbolic approach to rules-based techniques. So the statistical approach dominated until recently uh, when breakthrough in, in neural network design increased accuracy in natural language processing and computer vision. So these approaches revolutionized at AI research. Broadly speaking, artificial intelligence enables machines such as uh, computer systems, robots, to use algorithms to render intelligence and the capability to learn from deducing patterns of on raw data by perceiving a model consisting of the example input. What does it mean? Uh, AI enables the creation of a cognitive system that has the capability to process, analyze, and scale data and communicate seamlessly with interconnected machines. So the intelligence allows machines to independently take actionable decisions without the requirement of human intervention. That is, uh, machine learning algorithms further enhance AI by empowering the machines to learn from their own past experience, just like humans. So that is the real power of artificial intelligence, and that is the way in that um, this uh, powerful tool can be used to design and develop novel drugs or uh, design novel therapeutics, novel molecules, or design clinical trials. That is the, the real power of AI in, in pharma. Cecilia Van Cowenbergen is working in the area of AI, explaining what it is. Where can we see, you mentioned in pharma and, and, and things that are being done, where will we see some results? Are there any real-world examples that you wanted to share with us? Are we there at that point? Yes. No, exactly. That is important because, well, we define artificial intelligence, we define some uh, changes in the, in the pharmaceutical industry with uh, the developments of new life science techniques, but now how to match these advancements with drug discovery. Uh, on one hand, what we, we can see about this interaction between these new technologies and in the pharmaceutical industry that multiple companies are taking advantage of AI-based technologies from war groundwork on scientific literature, uh, clinical outcomes, dissertations and proceedings, drug profiles, and facilitating investigation. So because one of the most important things of AI is that 
also when able to understand not only words, but also concepts. It's a way in, in that we can emulate human thinking, but with empowered with, with, uh, um, with, with a machine learning technique. So that means that not only structured data, but also unstructured data from multiple sources can be leveraged as never seen before. So new correlations between molecular, uh, biological entities, and disease onset and progression can be found. So companies are using this information which is uh, available uh, in the cloud or available through multiple registries or uh, libraries or data repositories to develop new new concepts that had to really energize pharma. Um, one example could be the patient recruitment for clinical trials, for example, that is dramatically facilitated through the access to very comprehensive database, which can determine eligibility uh, almost instantaneously. So uh, here we, we can see a typical example in that a lot of time, money, and really important decisions can be made but using AI, and this can be used right now. So we we do not have to to wait five, ten years to see this result. This can be can be used right now. On the other hand, AI-driven platforms are focused on leverage data, also from ongoing clinical trials, also in order to establish the optimal pathways and further clinical validation, design, and execution. Other things that reimbursement challenges may be overcome by empowering drug discovery and development with AI driving technology. For example, the risking models are uh, becoming a standard process in which AI can take uh, an important place. In fact, the pharmaceutical industry leverages artificial intelligence from many corners. So companies are facilitating the development of potential cures for multiple diseases, including uh, life treating areas such as rare and chronic diseases, um, new predictive and prognostic solutions are helping medical researchers to identify optimal targets, for example. Uh, AI-driven platforms work with extremely large databases of genes, gene mutations, protein targets, molecules, signaling pathways, disease events, um, clinical records, clinical trials. So, allowing matching this information to find hidden drug disease correlation. Dr. Cecilia Van Cowenbergen is our guest. We're talking about artificial intelligence on primary care today here on ReachMD and talking about the role in the pharmaceutical industry. And there are those who are afraid of artificial intelligence. They see their jobs being replaced. They see you know, horror movies being made. Is that unrealistic? I mean, it seems to me that this is just a, a maximization of technology to try to improve life. But what's your thoughts on that? No, yes, I, I understand. Um, we have um, all fears to many unknown things. But one of the first things is that, in fact, with, uh, as I explained before, uh, artificial intelligence is not uh, a new tool or, or, or a new a new technology. In fact. Uh, machine learning, deep learning, uh, where a really development in other fields of science. But what what is important to understand here is that other advances uh, in in life sciences or, or in pharma or, or the, the uh, maximization of the technology synergy uh, with other um, other fields of research, uh, genomic level, for example, or stem cell therapies or things like that, uh, th that synergy between or this huge amount of data that we have uh, now uh, access is empowered also or, or is enabled that uh, artificial intelligence can be the really or can be leveraged uh, in, in all the, the power. So um, it's nothing to fear indeed because what AI allows right now is to leverage the huge amount of data that we have and then to improve or to find new solutions to things that 
never before we, we see that we can solve. So that is the real projections with AI. So, but it's, it's, it's like when you think in robots, so this is nothing that it could be replacing to the human brain or, or, or the human <laughs> capabilities. It's, it's just a new way to, to improve our decision-making process, is to leverage the best of the human thinking with the best of computing machine. Great way to explain it. And I want to thank you, Dr. Cecilia von Kellenbergen, for joining us on Primary Care today on HMD. I think it explained a lot about AI and also kind of comfort people, but also see the future and, and where it can be helpful. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you, Brian. I'm Dr. Brian McDonough. I hope you enjoyed this edition of Primary Care today on Reach MD. If you didn't hear it all, you can download the podcast and you can hear it again in its entirety. Thanks again for listening.